We're going to do something different this year. I'm going to go over a player list going into the week. And it's not going to be a start sit video. It's actually some call outs going over the analytics, going over the matchup, and seeing how these players trend. Good, bad, draft kings, ancillary players, cheap players, just going over the information. Today we're going to talk about 10 wide receivers who I think are fascinating going into the week. I'm not going to say they're must starts. I'm not going to say they're must sits. I'm fascinated about them. I want to talk about the matchup. I'm doing a video talking about the players. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're talking about these players every single day. With the waiver wire, we go hard on the waiver wire every day during the week. Even after your waiver wire is ran, I understand you're still picking up players. So we're going to talk about those deeper players. Some waiver wires run later than others. And then on top of that, we do deep dives on the top waiver wire players. Guys turning up and down. And then we help you with these videos set your lineups. Today we're talking about 10 fascinating wide receivers. That's all I'm going to say about that. I want to talk around them. I've been looking at the numbers. I've been thinking about them. And then looking at how they're ranked. Terry McLaurin's ranked wide receiver 26 per fantasy bros. And I understand Jaden Daniels. This is his first career start. I don't 100% trust it. I just don't. But I definitely know it's against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traditionally has been more of a pass funnel defense. And that could change this year. That could definitely change. And you got a quarterback here. Last year in college football among Power 5 quarterbacks. Most accurate deep ball attempt. 66.6% completion rate on balls that went over 20 plus yards. That being said, Terry McLaurin. I'm not going to say he's a must start. I just find him fascinating. That, that's why this video is the way it is. Terry McLaurin, wide receiver two in the rankings. Actually a wide receiver three, like a top end wide receiver three. This is letting you know how deep this wide receiver pool is. And Terry McLaurin can give you some top end upside. He's also very stable. And that was with not so good quarterback play last year. 12 fantasy points per game last year. And when I look at this matchup and how things could emerge in this game, I see 10, 12, 13 fantasy points. I see that. I see that being okay as your wide receiver three. Now I'm looking at George Pickens. This is a slower paced game. I got the over under right there in the middle at 42. This could be a nasty game, but how could this game break loose? And when you're thinking about this game, the Falcons are able to gel. They come out there and they're really knocking out targets to Drake London. They're able to move the football with B. John Robinson. That causes the Steelers having to keep up with the pace. And then if they got to keep up this pace, who are they going to throw the ball to? It's going to be George Pickens. He's going to have over a 20 plus percent target share. That's easy. We saw that in training camp. That's the one clue from training camp. It does not matter who the quarterback is. Well, it does because if you got Justin Fields back there at quarterback, you're going to have less pass attempts. But Russell Wilson's back there. He's going to glue to George Pickens. Both these quarterbacks did in training camp. It was every single day. It was the George Pickens show. I could really do a highlight tape on George Pickens and what he did at practice every single day. He's the only wide receiver I could do that with, especially in 11 versus 11s. I look for him to get a 20 plus percent target share. I look for him to be at least five targets. 6.6 .6 targets per game. I think that average is probably good for this game. I think that average kind of bleeds over this game. I think the targets will be a little bit more accurate. And they will be deep downfield. 13.5 ADOT. So they'll be deeper and more accurate. So more potential to score fantasy points. But the upside might be capped due to the matchup. This is why I think he's a fascinating player. But if you need targets. If you need a player with target share. You're starting him. You're just starting him. And you're just hoping for the best. Deontay Johnson. I find him very fascinating because this is going to be a very weird matchup. They're on the road against the Saints, and I think he's going to get a 20-plus percent target share. He's ranked as the wide receiver 34, so that means DraftKings is probably very cheap as well. I believe the market is low on him. They do not understand that, hey, this guy's going to at least get a 20-plus percent target share every game, and it's going to be up and down, but even with bad quarterback play, down here below, you look at what he did last year, 11.7 points per game. And he had some splash weeks. He also had games where he scored 18 points, 16, 14, 16. If I'm guessing his production for this game, 13, 14, 15-ish. I don't expect him to score 20. Might get it if we get some red zone looks, maybe. But I look for him to get funneled touches. 
If you're in a PPR league, I like him a little bit more. If I'm in half PPR, I'm a little bit more leery. This rankings for PPR, but Deontay Johnson, wide receiver 34 in the rankings, I believe that's a little light, and I believe the target share is going to be there enough to buoy him a little bit. A.D. Mitchell, I like him as a splash play for DraftKings. 3,800, and a splash play for me is just for tournaments, not cash games. If you do not understand the difference of what I just said there, just don't listen to this and just move on to the next player that I'm talking about. But for tournaments, you're setting multiple lineups and you're trying to be contrarian a little bit. He can make you contrarian because he's cheap. He's going to be on the field. He's going to get deep targets. He's going to be a gamble because you don't know if he's going to bring in those deep targets or not. We got high enough over under here at 48 and a half where something could happen. The game script could be pushed against the Texans. That is a money matchup there. So if we bring in a deep ball or two, that could be enough to buoy your lineup over and the roster construction here. You got your cheap player. Now you can load up the rest of your positions with higher priced players, players with better odds there. You got to pick right with those players. But with strategy sense here for DraftKings, and I say this for tournament cash games, you want to have players who have very, very good odds, not splash players, not volatile players, rookie in his first game, upside player with a high A dot, which is projected. He runs a 4-3. They need a guy like this to push the field. AD Mitchell, wide receiver, 64. That's fine. He's a rookie. I'm fine with that ranking. I believe you're ranking with multiple condoms on. You don't want to accidentally get your rankings pregnant here. But AD Mitchell, 38,000 salary. I'm looking at that as a good splash play option. Khalil Shakur, 5,100. Expensive splash play option, but he's going to have a higher route participation rate. He's going to get some work. He's going to get deep targets funneled to him. Keon Coleman's going to be playing in his first game. That may mean some targets may not be going to him. Look for Khalil Shakur to get some opportunities, some run in this matchup against the Cardinals. And the Cardinals and Bills games should be fast paced. There should be some opportunity here. Brian Thomas Jr. We got the Heat in Miami. And we got a fast-paced matchup, 49 over under. Anybody could get it in this game. He is cheap at $4,700. DraftKings realize this is a good matchup here that anybody could hit. So we upped the price on these players. That being said, he looked good with Trevor Lawrence. He can get downfield. Might be a guy for your tournaments. A lot of people are going to be making stacks with this matchup. This is actually a little bit chalky. However, if you're using him as a guy to be your cheap get as you get those higher priced players, that's good. But you also want to think about how you can be contrarian with this matchup. What ancillary players you can throw into your lineup while taking advantage of this matchup. Brian Thomas Jr., John U. Smith, ancillary players like that that could randomly hit. You kind of want to take advantage of those, take those gambles. Again, if you're setting one lineup, if you're in cash games, you don't do this strategy. If you're setting multiple lineups, 10 or more, I would say around 50 or so for your DraftKings strategy or FanDuel or whatever you're doing, then you're doing this strategy and you're probably doing it by default anyways. Calvin Ridley, I look for him to get a 20 plus percent target share. I look for him to get opportunity. I look for this Bears matchup to be interesting. It's fascinating. I want to watch this game. I want to see what happens. He's ranked as the wide receiver 36. I think they're underrating him. The target share is going to be high. And with DeAndre Hopkins banging up, Will Levis is going to look his way. He's going to funnel the deep target. Cortland Sutton's in a weird situation here. We know it's going to be a slow-paced game. And we got a rookie quarterback in his first game ever. Ranked as the wide receiver 40. The price tag's at 5600 on DraftKings. And redraft, you're only starting him if you have to. But if the Broncos get behind and it's late third quarter, we're in the fourth quarter, they may let Bo Nix get his experience and sling the rock. Look for Cortland Sutton to get some deep balls. And on top of that, with bad quarterback play below me, when he's healthy on the field, he can still score. He still has got some opportunity there. He can average 12 points per game. And with this matchup, even though it's going to be slower, both teams are going to run the ball here. I still see him getting enough targets. I say four to five is probably what you're going to see out of him on average. But if we do get some garbage time, that may go up to six or seven. And he's going to get a good average depth of target. He's going to get goal line looks. He's going to be used in the red zone. 
and this could be a splash play. Traditional redraft. Remember, I'm talking about all formats here. Traditional redraft. I hope you listen to what I preached during the offseason and you're built out wide receiver and you don't have to make this decision. Jamison Williams, perfect play here for DraftKings. Perfect play, 4,500. They got him juiced up because we're in a matchup here against the Rams with a 52 over under, but the perfect play for DraftKings. He's cheap. He's got upside to his name. The thing about this might be too chalky for tournaments. Might be too chalky, might be in too many lineups, but I want to call that out because he's not going to get a 20% target share. It might be like 15 range, something like that, but the average depth of target's going to be deep. It's just going to be deep. Brings in one or two balls, which might get pushed to an extra ball or two in this game due to them playing the Rams. And if this matchup runs hot, he could run hot, bringing in a big catch, a good gamble on a couple lineups. Jalen Hyatt. Let's go super cheap here, 3100 So if you really want to make a gamble here, if you really want to be contrarian and you want that contrarian play, look at him. He's been looking good in training camp. He's been running good routes. And he had a 20.7 average depth of target. He ran enough routes to really get a good sample here. He's going to be used as a deep threat, as a clear out guy with Malik Neighbors. The Vikings were a pass funnel defense last year. That might be locked down a little bit more this year. So cut that in half a little bit. But still, this game's going to be weird. This game's going to be weird. And the fact is, 41 over under, that could break either way. That could break either way. This could be a low scoring game or a nasty high scoring game where it's ugly still. Either way, it's probably going to be ugly. Jalen Hyatt isn't a guarantee. The 3,100 salary says he's not. But looking at some of these numbers and indicators here, this is a good matchup for a guy getting a deep average depth of target, getting a couple targets, and maybe a few more this season per game that might allow him to splash in a matchup that's beneficial for a splash play wide receiver. Again, a player like this, you want to use in a couple of your lineups and then just build the rest of your lineup out with higher priced players. And if this player hits and your high priced players who have better odds do what they're supposed to do, you might be in some money in tournaments. If not, you got a ton of other lineups to work with. But this is another player to look at. Again, I just find these players fascinating. And I want to talk ball around these players. I want to talk about the psychology. And I want to talk about the process. Because the process overall in the future today, tomorrow, next week, next year, a few years later, it's going to help you build lineups. It's going to help you make DraftKings lineups. And that's going to teach you ball. That's going to teach you the statistics and theories as I talk around these players. That's why it's valuable here. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.